Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about a very basic topic which is chest pain and coronary artery disease. Some of the things that we need to know and some of the, uh, the mistakes that we commonly make while taking care of these patients. So with that, we come to somebody who comes in either in the ER or in the clinic with chest pain. In this case, let's see, let's assume a patient comes into the ER with chest pain. Obviously, we all need to know that we have to ask them about their symptoms. We do EKG, we do blood test, some other risk factors that you need to know about these patients. Obviously, if somebody is young, not a smoker, not diabetic, no family history, probably have a lower risk of having a coronary artery disease and the chest pain might be atypical or musculoskeletal, but your pretest probability goes up when you have these patients who have either previous coronary artery disease or a smoker or diabetic or are elderly. The basic thing is to have an idea and to keep things very simple. Somebody comes in with chest pain, you just have to basically categorize them into two categories. Or in this case, I just say that you just put them in two two buckets. Number one is with a stable ischemic heart disease and number two is ACS. Once you establish or put the patient in one of these either buckets, things start to come together and becomes very simple. So let's see how you categorize these patients or put them into these buckets. So bucket one is stable ischemic heart disease stable ischemic heart disease and when we are talking about somebody with a stable ischemic heart disease basically we have ruled them out for ACS by checking the troponins and on the EKGs you're not seeing very dynamic EKG changes or uh, T wave inversions or ST depressions and this is the category of patients where you know all these trials that we are very fond of talking about and there is a lot of debate about that is ischemia trial the courage trial the courage trial being a very old trial ischemia is is the recent one but these are the patients who are stable do they have ischemic heart disease but they are stable not in any um, bad situation at this point of time and you have time to kind of further confirm your diagnosis so in these patients, as, as I said, you can do stress tests and on the board as well as in clinical practice. Try to do exercise stress tests in these patients. For some reason, the board likes this question where they want you to first make sure the patient is having stable ischemic heart disease and then have them some kind of a stress test, but basically either a plain exercise stress test for younger patients or even if you have to do any other nuclear stress test, they want you to combine with the exercise part as well. They will clearly tell you the patient is not able to, to do exercise or there are a lot of EKT changes. And that's when you know you can do either stress, perfusion, scan or echocardiogram. But basically what is more important is the medical treatment. So once you establish that the patient's got stable ischemic heart disease, they're their stress test comes back positive and if it is a low or intermediate risk you are still better off just treating them medically and that's where this ischemia and the courage trial helps you and and supports you so in these patients as we all know you can start statins beta blockers aspirin all those things that can decrease their risk of having to move from this stable ischemic heart disease to the ACS arm. One thing you also have to know is most of the time we see these patients with positive stress tests sent to the cath lab. But you have to tell the patient that the who get invasive testing and PCI or revascularization the benefit of revascularization is only for symptoms. So if these patients despite being on two anti anginal which can be beta blockers or nitrates 
or if they have contraindication to beta blockers they can be on calcium channel blockers and those are only diltiazem and verapamil not the amlodipine or nifedipine so you have to get them on two antianginals and if it's still they have chest pain then you can make a case of sending this patient for revascularization so we here we'll stop this and we'll come to the second arm which is the ACS as the name suggests it's acute coronary syndrome we basically categorize that into a STEMI which is an emergency the patient needs to go to the cath lab and another one is the NSTEMI non-ST elevation MI in non-ST elevation MI you still have time you can admit these patients start them on anticoagulants statins DAPT and then send them to the cath lab but what you really have to understand is that you cannot apply the ischemia trial or the courage trial to these patients that will be wrong once you establish the patient called ACS they have elevated troponin they have EKG changes they need to go define their coronary and anatomy and that is they need to have a left heart catheterization yes on left heart catheterization if they have minimal disease or if 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 it is a type 2 and STEMI then you can make a case saying okay we're going to treat that patient medically but obviously you have to kind of define their coronary anatomy uh, in these ACS patients what really most important is once these patients are categorized into ACS you have to basically do two things you have to anticoagulate them and you have to give them antiplatelets so number one number two again as I said, once you put this patient in two different buckets, things are very simple. For example, as we go back to, to this number one bucket, stable ischemic heart disease, there is no mention of anticoagulants, antiplatelets. So you admit these patients, even if you don't start them on any antiplatelets or anticoagulant, you are fine. But once you make a diagnosis of ACS and admit these patients, you have to start them on anticoagulant, which can be heparin. And the antiplatelet it can be Plavix, Brillenta, or Prasacryl. And then another one is the aspirin. Two of these P2 Y12 inhibitors, the Plavix and the Brillenta, can be preloaded, meaning you can load them on the floor or in the ER. While the Prasacryl is only loaded in the cath lab. Don't ask me why, but it was just because the trial that was designed to test Prasagril. These patients are only loaded with Prasagril in the, in the cath lab once their anatomy was defined. As far as the DAPT goes, there is a lot of question, okay, should we give only patient aspirin or we should load them or we should wait for them to go to the cath lab and then define their coronary anatomy and then load them maybe they have three vessel disease and they might need bypass the counter argument is how many times have you seen these patients with ACS going to cabbage very rarely so 99.9% .9 chances that even if these patients have three vessel disease they will still get admitted they will get carotid Doppler they will get mean mapping and the surgeons will probably wait for these patients to kind of have their um, P2Y12 inhibitors washed out before they take to the cath lab. So if you have these patients, it is okay to load them with Plavix and the loading dose is 600. Unless the patient is more than 75 years of age. In this case, it will be 300 milligram of Plavix. Berlinta is 180 milligram. And again, as I said, the Prasacryl or the effiant is only started in the cath lab. It's 60 milligram, but it is given in the cath lab. So again, ACS, STEMI patient goes to the cath lab. They still need dual antiplatelet and anticoagulant, which is heparin. If it's an STEMI, you have some time. It, it is okay to load them with Plavix 600 
arbitral lenta don't worry about these patients having three vessel disease because even if they have three vessel disease the surgeon is not going to take them the next morning if you have admitted them overnight yes if somebody you have a very very high suspicion then you can hold off on dual antiplatelet but at least give them the aspirin with these two buckets in between there is what we call an unstable angina it is a class in itself where you can either go both direction you can either go the acs pathway where you can anticoagulate this patient give them dab or you can give them some nitrate start them on nitroglycerin drip and then you can do a stress test in these patients you have to do a stress test in these patients only if their chest pain is gone so if their chest pain is gone then you can go and do medical management as well as stress test but if they still having active chest pain they can they, you can make an argument of going through the acs pathway sending this patient for left heart catheterization and then defining their coronary anatomy thank you very much